Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about handstands. Okay, now that I'm rested and recovered, let's start with the video. That footage was about how things were meant to go, but it actually ended up taking multiple different takes to get up the stairs, and I ended up smashing my knee against the windowsill. So obviously I am not an expert on the handstand, but I think that just goes to show why I found that a lot of people around me are quite envious of the fact that I'm able to hold a handstand quite frequently is because of the fact that I have never incorporated, at least not recently, any specific training or scheduled programming surrounding my handstands. I've always kind of just been able to do it. So a little bit later into the video, I'm going to explain exactly how I was actually able to achieve this. The very nature of the handstand is actually quite unique as it is one of the only activities that require multiple nervous sensations and motor skills to execute safely and correctly. Firstly, and most importantly, is muscle strength and endurance, which is required to control and maintain your center of gravity and your mass above your shoulders. Second is proprioception and balance, which is required to sense your body's position in time and react accordingly. Third, sight, and your ability to adapt your balance through vision goes hand in hand with a handstand. Hand in hand with a handstand. And lastly, touch. You need to adapt to the sensation of the environment through your hands, through feeling the surface that you are grounded on. So is this just a party trick or can one actually reap the benefits of such an activity? Well, on the contrary, in lower limb rehabilitation, weight bearing activities are actually encouraged and are commonly used as a part of treatment. Weight bearing does more than just muscle activation. As stated before, it includes proprioceptive input and is even used to improve bone mineral density. It also has the ability to improve tendon strength and even things like increased mass or cross-sectional area of ligaments. So can this apply to the upper limb too? Well, while the research is kind of unclear on that, we know that weight-bearing activity and closed chain exercise certainly do have their role in upper limb rehabilitation. And they are certainly beneficial. Not only that, but handstands require a lot more than just shoulder strength. In EMG studies, they are shown to also elicit muscle activity in the anterior deltoid, pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, biceps brachii, and even the trapezius. There's also obviously the requirement of muscle activity through your wrist flexors and extensors in order to control a handstand. Like I said, am I an expert at the handstand? No. And should you do what I did to adequately learn the handstand? Not necessarily. But I want this to be a cut and dry, no bullshit, minimally progressive, informal fashion on how I managed to get the handstand. First things first, I think it goes without saying, is train and especially strength training and resistance training. Now, it doesn't have to be specific, but just basically increasing the amount of activity that you're doing through your muscles in the upper limb is going to benefit you a lot. It's going to improve shoulder strength, shoulder stability, and it obviously can also improve tendon strength, ligament strength, and a lot of things that are required to do a handstand. So if you're just doing pressing movements, whether or not it is vertical or horizontal, whatever you are doing, just do shoulder exercises. Make sure you're doing shoulder resistance training on a regular basis, and that will help loads. That's probably why I found it so easy to get into it in the first place. Secondly, build the strength and be specific. So this is obviously what a lot of the guards on YouTube and the internet and Reddit are going to say. And they're going to give you a lot of progressions on how you can specifically train for a handstand. These things include static holds against the wall, trying to push off against the wall so that you can maintain balance through the handstand. This also involves other open chain activities like frog stands and also doing park push-ups and handstand push-ups. All of these things are gonna train for the handstand in a specific fashion and will obviously increase your strength for the handstand. But this isn't what I used to be able to get into it in the first place. The number one ultimate strategy that allowed me to get into a handstand was literally repetition. And now you're probably wondering why I made you watch through all of this to tell you to do the handstand in order to do a handstand. It sounds pretty redundant and stupid, but 
I'm not talking about scheduling, training sessions. The problem with a lot of handstand progressions and what a lot of handstand training activities do is they build shoulder control and strength, but they don't actually expose you to the handstand itself. Back when I was 18 years old and studying for finals, through study breaks, I used to just kick up into a handstand once or twice. Every day, without fail, every hour, I would kick up to a handstand, whether or not it was five seconds, 10 seconds, two seconds, I would just consistently do it just for fun. And usually I would fall straight back down. But the more and more you practice and the more that you try to just do the handstand itself, instead of doing progressions, then the more likely you are to develop the motor pattern and what it is like to actually control a handstand. About two months in, I tried to do a handstand for a photo and I found myself completely suspended in the air from my amazement. And I didn't have to use my balance reactions to stay upright. I was able to just completely stay mid air on my hands and hold it for at least 15 to 20 seconds. No training involved, literally just practicing the handstand in my room, on my carpet every single day, just through random bouts of energy and activity throughout the day. And suddenly it just clicked like this. And from there, that activity sparked the motivation to get better. And then I could focus on training and specific handstand progressions. So my handstand is not perfect, but I'm able to actually do it. And I never trained for it. If I don't do a handstand throughout an entire year, there's something about a motor pattern that is so fascinating is that I can just kick up into a handstand and I'm able to maintain it for at least 10 to 20 seconds without having trained it for months or even years. And I feel like that for a lot of people will be very motivating, especially if you want to do the handstand. If you just expose yourself, gradual exposure to the handstand and you'll eventually get it. So obviously you need a basis you need foundational strength and you don't want to injure yourself, right? So the proper way to do things would be probably to warm up and to introduce yourself and gradually expose to the handstand. So personally, this is not one of those things that I program into my gym training. I just like to do it for fun every time I get the inspiration to. But unless my goals align specifically with the handstand, I will not incorporate them into my training. And this has never affected my ability to be able to do a handstand. Now I'm not perfect and I, I know I have banana posture a lot of the time, but this isn't uncomfortable for me and this has never caused an injury throughout my whatever, eight, nine, 10 years of doing a handstand. I've never had pain doing a handstand. So handstands definitely do interest me and I would love to actually get back into them in order to control them properly and even being able to do handstand push-ups. I can maybe do one handstand push-up now if I wanted to, but I end up just losing balance and not having the strength to go through a full range of motion. So I'd like to do that in the future, but at the moment it really doesn't align with my goals. So it all depends on what your goals are and what you're trying to achieve. Anyway, I hope that was not too boring and I hope you enjoyed my little rant about my handstands. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.